Ever tried to high-five someone standing 16 kilometers away? It sounds impossible, right? Well, by 2035, maybe sooner if the engineers stop hitting the snooze button. A $4 billion steel ribbon is slated to stretch across the Red Sea and let Africa and Asia finally slap palms. This isn't some far-fetched fantasy. Egyptian officials have confirmed that planning for the project is complete and it's ready for implementation. The plan, officially named the King Solomon bin Abdulaziz Bridge, but already dubbed the Moses Bridge by locals, is no small undertaking. It's a declaration in concrete and steel that aims to erase a gap that has defined trade and travel for centuries. Imagine a future with no lengthy ferry queues, no deep sea tunnel claustrophobia, just a flat sun-baked deck where you can leave the Egyptian resort of Sharm El Sheikh after breakfast and roll onto Saudi sand well before lunch. The journey time is expected to be cut to just 30 minutes. Is it just a bold shortcut or is it destined to become the planet's preciest and most complicated diplomatic handshake? The world is placing its bets. To understand the immense ambition behind this project, one needs only to look at a satellite image of the region at night. That skinny blue vein separating Egypt and Saudi Arabia, the Strait of Tehran, appears deceptively small, shorter than many urban commutes. Yet, this narrow waterway forces an estimated $200 billion worth of trade on a massive detour every single year. Trucks carrying manufactured goods, shipping containers packed with raw materials, religious pilgrims, and even weekend tourists are all forced to take the long scenic route. A brief boat ride, which seems trivial, becomes a formidable wall when you're attempting to move millions of tons of cargo or millions of people. This geographic bottleneck has profound economic consequences, particularly for the nations of Africa. Landlocked African countries feel this squeeze the hardest. The current logistics make it so that a factory in Lagos can often ship its products to Shanghai faster and more cheaply than it can to nearby Riyadh. This inefficiency is a break on potential growth, with sub-Saharan GDP projected to hit $4 trillion by 2030. This literal puddle in the Red Sea is diverting a colossal wave of economic momentum northward toward Europe or Far East to Asia, instead of allowing it to flow directly across to the Arabian Peninsula. The bridge promises to change this equation entirely, creating new trade corridors that could reshape the economic map. In response to this decades-old problem, Saudi Arabia is reportedly writing the $4 billion check, financing the project in its entirety without loans from international bodies. Egypt, in return, contributes the land and, crucially, a commitment to shredding the miles of red tape that have stalled the project since it was first conceived back in 1988. The result of this collaboration will be a direct, streamlined path that promises to convert weeks of maritime shipping into mere hours of driving. The economic math is so compelling that it's become difficult to resist. Of course, bridging this gap is an engineering marvel in the making. You can't simply dump concrete into water that is over 300 meters deep and hope for the best, especially not in a seasonally active zone where the African and Arabian tectonic plates are constantly jostling for position. The region's unique geology demands an equally unique solution. Engineers initially flirted with the idea of a majestic, sky-high suspension bridge, and then considered a stealthy, buried tunnel. Ultimately, they settled on a hybrid approach, a combination of low-level causeways that rise into a grand, twin-deck cable-stayed span high above the main shipping lane. This design ensures that maritime traffic, crucial for the global economy, can pass unhindered. A hidden service tunnel is also planned to run underneath, providing access for maintenance crews without disrupting the flow of traffic above. The harsh marine environment presents its own set of challenges. The highly saline red sea water is notoriously corrosive and eats through standard steel rebar 
like a ravenous predator. To combat this, the engineering team is turning to next-generation materials. They plan to utilize basalt fiber rods, which are immune to rust, and will mix self-healing concrete infused with limestone-producing bacteria that can automatically seal any cracks that form. The bridge's support system will be equally innovative. Picture shock absorbers on the scale of the Eiffel Tower. Massive rubber bearings, each the size of a shipping container, placed between every pillar and the seabed to absorb seismic shocks. The sheer scale is staggering. The structure will consume more steel than three Eiffel Towers, and enough concrete to pave a four-lane highway from Cairo to Cape Town. The logistical operation required to bring these materials together is a circus in its own right. The nearest port capable of handling the enormous prefabricated bridge segments is 600 kilometers away. To solve this, construction crews are planning to build a pop-up factory on a massive floating island anchored off the Egyptian coast. From there, GPS-guided barges will meticulously slide each colossal segment into place, synchronized with the tides. The margin for error is razor thin. If a segment is off by as little as 8 centimeters, the project could burn through $2 million a day in delays while the unforgiving sea looks on and laughs. A $4 billion investment doesn't just buy asphalt and concrete. It buys influence and a powerful geopolitical microphone. Saudi Arabia's public investment fund, the financial engine behind this mega-project, isn't making a secret of its strategic endgame. The bridge is a vital artery for NEOM, the futuristic mirrored city planned for the Saudi shore. NEOM's ambitious vision depends on a steady flow of African raw materials and a diverse pool of Asian intellectual capital. The bridge is designed to be its grand, velvet-roped entrance. This direct land link would fundamentally alter regional trade dynamics, allowing goods to travel from Africa to the Arabian Peninsula without bypassing Israel. A significant geopolitical shift. Other global powers are watching this development with keen interest. China, with its ever-expanding Belt and Road Initiative, sees a golden opportunity. Chinese engineers have quietly joined the design team, ensuring that when the bridge opens, their standards for container dimensions, digital tracking tags, and customs codes become the new regional norm, seamlessly integrating the bridge into their own network. Washington, however, is less relaxed about the project. The US stiff fleet is docked nearby, and its strategic priority is maintaining freedom of navigation through the critical strait of Tehran. A fixed bridge, from a military perspective, is a fixed target, and any potential for control over this choke point raises security concerns. The project also creates ripples for neighboring countries like Israel and Jordan, who are not entirely thrilled by the prospect. Their ports in Eilat and Aqaba, respectively, currently benefit from the existing trade routes. To counter the bridge's competitive advantage, rumors are already swirling about potential EU and Gulf-funded rail lines one extending to Haifa in Israel and another to Aqaba. That could transform the Moses Bridge from a simple point-to-point -point connection into a complex, three-way junction where trade alliances will jostle for economic dominance. The first truck to cross this bridge won't just be carrying freight. It will be hauling a new era of geopolitical realities, triggering a cascade of new tariffs, security pacts, and perhaps even a currency swap or two. Beyond the cold calculations of economics and politics, the bridge holds deep cultural and spiritual significance. For the more than 2 million Muslims who undertake the Hajj pilgrimage each year, the bridge represents a profound change. Currently, many pilgrims fly into Jeddah before enduring long, crowded bus journeys. A direct road from Cairo would slice up to two days off the trip for many African pilgrims, significantly reducing both the cost and the carbon footprint of their journey. Imams are already speaking of a road to mercy, envisioning a continuous route from Lagos to Mecca with this bridge as its magnificent keystone. As part of a broader trend, Saudi Arabia is already reforming its Hajj logistics, moving towards a more centralized system 
to enhance the pilgrim experience, a goal this bridge directly supports. The tourism industry is also buzzing with anticipation, smelling a lucrative new market. Imagine the appeal of a Nairobi to Raya road trip completed in just 48 hours, with pit stops for rich Kenyan coffee, delicious Sudanese pastries, and sweet Saudi dates along the way. Major hotel chains are already pre-booking stretches of empty coastline on both sides of the Red Sea, betting that travelers will pay a premium for the unique bragging rights. I parked my car on two continents before breakfast. But the symbolism of the bridge runs deeper than mere selfies and souvenirs. For centuries, the Red Sea has acted as a divider, separating the Arab and African worlds. This bridge sketches a new, modern Afro-Arab identity, one drawn with tarmac and steel, rather than the fading ink of colonial maps. This sentiment is already bubbling up from the ground. Street artists in Cairo have created mock-ups of the bridge's pylons, shaped like Nubian and Bedouin figures clasping hands in solidarity. The hashtag hashtag handshake of continents has already trended twice on social media, once in Arabic and once in Amharic, a testament to the powerful idea of connection, all before a single shovel has hit the ground. However, this monumental project casts a long environmental shadow. The waters of the Strait of Tehran are not an empty void. They are a bustling marine freeway, teeming with life. This area is home to whale sharks, endangered dugongs, and over 300 species of vibrant coral. The constant clatter of construction can scramble the sensitive echolocation used by dolphins and whales, while dredging activity threatens to bury vital feeding grounds under layers of silt. The potential for a single ecological domino to fall and send a shiver through the entire Red Sea ecosystem is a risk that cannot be ignored. The developers have responded to these grave concerns with a comprehensive, three-layer environmental mitigation plan. The first layer involves the use of robotic pile drivers equipped with sophisticated acoustic sensors that will automatically shut down the moment a dolphin's click is detected nearby. The second layer is the construction of artificial reef domes, which will be bolted directly onto the bridge's pylons, designed to serve as both wave breakers and thriving coral nurseries. The third and most significant layer is the establishment of a dedicated conservation fund seeded with 5% of the project's total budget. This fund will make annual payments to regional marine parks to support their conservation and research efforts. Is this genuine environmental stewardship or simply clever greenwashing? It's likely a bit of both, but it also represents what could be the largest privately funded reef experiment in history. Ultimately, only time and the resilience of the coral itself will deliver the final verdict. As of the summer of 2025, the project is gaining momentum. The environmental impact reports have been stamped, the substantial funding is locked in place, and Sudan has quietly given assurances that it will not create issues over transit rights. The first phase of construction is scheduled to kick off in January 2026. The opening will be phased. Freight-only traffic is anticipated by late 2031 with tourists gaining access in the spring of 2033. The grand full-scale inauguration, complete with fireworks, is projected for October 1, 2035. This timeline, however, is optimistic. If Egypt's domestic political situation becomes unstable or if regional tempers flare, an additional 18 months could easily be added to the schedule. But if everything proceeds as smoothly as silk, one can picture a convoy of electric SUVs carrying African presidents streaming across the bridge, a historic moment broadcast live for the entire world to see. The morning after the grand opening will begin like any other. The sun will rise, fishermen will haul in their nets, massive tankers will creep past in the distance, and gulls will squabble overhead. Then, the first convoy will hit the bridge. Within hours, a quiet revolution will take place. GPS applications worldwide will instantly recalculate and redraw their maps. Freight forwarders in Lagos will reroute shipments of textiles directly to Riyadh. 
Coffee growers in Ethiopia will begin locking in truck slots weeks in advance. Insurance firms will scramble to invent new policies and pricing for a risk corridor that didn't exist just the day before. The border towns on both sides are destined to balloon overnight, transforming from dusty collections of canvas shacks into bustling boomtowns, and perhaps, eventually, into megacities. Hawkers will sell commemorative passport stamps, encouraging travelers to pose for a photo with one foot in Africa, one foot in Asia, a single step. Somewhere in that first convoy, a trucker will live stream the crossing on TikTok. And for a fleeting 30 seconds, the entire planet will watch asphalt, sea, sky, and history stack on top of each other in a single, mesmerizing frame. So, whether you call it the Moses Bridge, the King Salman Causeway, or the most expensive geopolitical fist bump in recorded history, one thing is certain. This is no longer a fantasy. It has evolved from a dream into a gout chart with secured funding, a pile driver with a warranty, and a powerful statement cast in bacteria-laced, self-healing concrete. The bridge carries the potential to knit two continents together with unprecedented intimacy, but it also risks becoming the world's most photogenic and underused parking lot if political winds shift. Either way, the next time someone tries to tell you that infrastructure can't be thrilling, tell them the story of the day Africa and Asia decided to shake hands over the sea, and then ask them which lane they'll choose when the lights finally turn green.